In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My friends, as we gather to celebrate Eucharist for this fourth Sunday of Ordinary Time, we remember the power of God's Word, a Word that is proclaimed amongst us, a Word that challenges us to grow as we follow the Word Himself, Jesus Christ. Relying now on God's grace, we again proclaim God's mercy. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are Son of God, Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh, splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. We pray through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and to ever. Amen.
Let us kneel before the Lord who made us, for he is our God, and we are the people he shepherds, the flock he guides. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Oh, that today you would hear his voice. Harden not your hearts as at Meribah, as in the day of Massa in the desert, where your fathers tempted me. They tested me, though they had seen my works. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I should like you to be free of anxieties. An unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But a married man is anxious about the things of the world how he may please his wife, and he is divided. An unmarried woman or a virgin is anxious about the things of the Lord, so that she may be holy in both body and spirit. A married woman, on the other hand, is anxious about the things of the world, how she may please her husband. I am telling you this for your own benefit, not to impose a restraint upon you, but for the sake of propriety and adherence to the Lord without distraction. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Speak, Lord, your servants, and listen. You have the words of everlasting love. Alleluia. Then they came to Capernaum, and on the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. The people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. In their synagogue was a man with an unclean spirit. He cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Quiet, come out of him. The unclean spirit convulsed him, and with a loud cry came out of him. All were amazed and asked one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. His fame spread everywhere throughout the whole region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today's selection from the Gospel of St. Mark gives us the first public act of Jesus. A dramatic exorcism done in the local synagogue in the vacation resort town of Capernaum. Jesus confronts the evil in a possessed man, speaking and acting with authority, an authority 
that is rooted in God. Now, synagogues could be found in most small towns in Galilee. The order of worship in these holy places is not unlike our own liturgy of the Word, with a gathering prayer, uh, scripture proclamations, and a, a sermon or, or reflect, reflection on the Word that is just shared. Now, this homily, if you will, didn't require a high priest or even a rabbi. It could be given by any qualified male Israelite. That's the context of Jesus' teaching. Now notice, Mark doesn't tell us what Jesus said. He focuses more on how Jesus taught. And he taught with authority an inner authority that is rooted in his person. Rather than simply quoting text or uh, affirming well-known principles or teachings, Jesus has something new to say in his saying. And he says it directly and convincingly. Imagine you're in that assembly. A pious Jew who heard someone speak in that way couldn't help but think of the ancient prophets. That's implied in the, the response of the people that Mark tells us. These prophets of old also spoke with authority. In their words, the people knew the power of God's word. But this prophetic voice in Israel has been silent for many generations. Oh yes, the words of the prophets, you know, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Hosea, on and on and on, they were written in the sacred scrolls. And yes, High priests and scholars and rabbis, they applied those words to the times. But somehow, as helpful as this was, it lacked the immediacy. It, it lacked the conviction, the authority that had been the hallmark of the prophets. And then, Long comes Jesus. Now he's given the title prophet by some, but he insists he's more. Jesus not only proclaims the word, he is the word. The word of God. The revelation God in human flesh. Now the word revelation literally means lifting of a veil. This definition, this, this term, suggests that something once hidden has suddenly been made manifest. And that goes to the very heart of our faith. God, who is so beyond us, and for us to know this God, God has to first reveal. That's what the Hebrew scripture is all about. Out of infinite silence, God's word has sounded. God used the prophets of old for this revealing. Then, in Jesus, the revealer becomes the revealed. His very life is the message. The love that impelled him and sustained him, 
even to death, reveals the depth of God's love. ultimate meaning of our human lives. Now we believe that Jesus still speaks in our world. He still speaks in and to our hearts. Have we grown weary of that word? Are we too tired of his ageless message? Have the ins and outs, the ups and downs of life calloused us, closed us up? Can we say that we're still astonished, amazed by the world? If today you hear his voice, what will you do? We profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate with the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified unto Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Strengthened and challenged by God's word, we offer our petitions. For God's holy people, the church, that we will have open and listening hearts to receive God's word and act upon it. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in the world, that all people will live together in peace, reverencing and respecting the great diversity of God's creation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For teachers and all who work with our youth, that they will be inspired and strengthened in their important work of formation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and those who care for them, that the healing power and presence of Christ will be their source of comfort and strength. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, that they will know eternal peace with the angels and saints in glory. We remember especially today, Marie Schneider, Frank Sylvia on the 10th anniversary of his death, Thomas E. McVeigh, on the anniversary of his death, Nancy Goulet, Mary Samuel and Anthony Santoro, Jean Dumoulin Lotway Collier, on the 
20th anniversary of her death, and Edward J. Blake on the 4th anniversary of his death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Relying on God's grace, we pray in Jesus' name, now and forever. Amen. pray that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, our loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all, his holy church. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just to give you thanks and to raise you a hymn of glory and praise, O Lord, God of infinite goodness. For by the word of your Son's gospel, you have brought together one church from every people, tongue, and nation, and having filled her with life by the power of your spirit, you never cease, through her, to gather the whole human race into one. Manifesting the covenant of your love, she dispenses without ceasing the blessed hope of your kingdom and shines bright as the sign of your faithfulness, which in Christ Jesus our Lord you promised would last for eternity. And so with all the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, while with all the church, as one voice, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who loves the human race and who always walks with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scripture and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many. 
for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life, and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. Grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church by the light of the gospel, strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people, together with Francis, our Pope, Edgar, our Bishop, with the whole order of bishops, and in a world torn by strife, we, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and reconciliation. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to eternal dwelling place, and live with you forever there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs and all the saints. We shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant peace unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Friends, the peace of the Lord be with you always. In your spirit. We are in Christ's presence as we share his peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter unto my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O oh Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase through Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, there's a star predicted for Monday night into Tuesday, and I just remind you of our policy for daily Mass that if Somerset schools postpone or delay or cancel class for that day, the daily mass at 8 o'clock is canceled as well. So please just be very aware of the weather. You can watch it on Channel 10 or Channel 12. They have the cancellations of Channel 6 as well too. And just be aware of that. And please be careful in, in the snow and ice if you do plan to come. Church. Also, as you know, the rollout of the COVID-19 vaccine has been a little bumpy, and we're finding amongst a number of our parishioners, our, our older parishioners do not have access to a computer, and many times, in order to get the vaccine, you have to sign up online, and so we'd like to offer the availability of the equipment of a computer uh, through the parish office, but we need some adults or young people, you know, high school kids, who would be willing to offer a few hours during the week to come to the rectory and to be available to help some of our older parishioners to sign up uh, for that service, for that COVID vaccine. If you are able to help, few hours, um, any time during the week, could you please give Wendy a call at the parish office, and then we'll uh, get the word out to our, our folks in order to help them to get this very important vaccine. I've been lucky. I had my first dose, and I got word uh, when I had to go for the second on uh, February 16th. So uh, let's all try to get it so we can move beyond this uh, lockdown. And lastly, uh, I should have done this a long time ago, but a number of people have asked. In church, we have this white card. It's called the Congregational Responses for Mass. And some people have asked if they could buy them or if they could have one. 
And I said, certainly. So I had ordered brand new ones, and they'll be available at the parish office if you'd like to use one at the home. Or if you, if you do come to church, we only ask that you bring it to church with you and take it home with you. If you leave it in church, we have to throw it out. If you'd like to make a donation, that's fine, but, but don't worry about that. The important thing is you can have the responses to pray along with the Mass uh, each week. Should have done this a while ago. Just take me a little time, that's all. So they will be available at the office and they'll be available at church, hopefully this weekend, uh, for our parishioners who do come to Mass over at St. Thomas More. The Lord be with you. May our almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. We go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.